How's it going, everybody? I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about some questions I received recently from um, a number of people. Um, I often work with students that have earned their CCNA and um, they, they hit that and um, this isn't really going to be like what to do after you have your CCNA because a lot of people know what to do, right? They put their CCNA in their resume and they start doing the job hunt, right? They try to find a job so that they can start, you know, down the IT career path. But the most common question I get, and it's kind of hard for me to answer it because it really depends on the individual than it does on what I think somebody should do. So the most common question I get is, I have a CCNA and I'm not sure if I should go the CCNB for the enterprise path or if I should go security or if I should, should go data center or collaboration. Well, that's a great question because no one person can tell everybody else what to do, right? I mean, that's the beauty of, you know, the certification world. If you have an interest in, interest in something, you can obviously go the direction that you want to. Um, I had a conversation with a friend of mine on Friday. His name is Mark. And I've also had this conversation with probably 30 or 40 other people over the course of the last few months. And especially now that the new certification program has been going since, it's actually been going live since April, but you know, one of the things that a lot of people aren't sure on or don't know which direction to go in is I have a CCNA, I'm not sure which way to go. And I, this question came up again and I said, uh, to the person that was I'm talking to, I was speaking to, they've been you know CCNA for a while now. They do like uh, first level. They're more like a help desk, but for on the the network side of the house. So a lot of, a lot of times they're troubleshooting problems, um, verifying that the configurations were uh, in place and that you know the the VLAN can traverse multiple switches, crossover trunk links, and things like that. Basically, layer two networking. Well, all that is great, right? And I said, well, there's a difference between network configuration troubleshooting and the network operation troubleshooting. And I said, he, he was trying to find some really good uh, references for troubleshooting in general. And I said, well, there, there really isn't. I mean, the configuration troubleshooting that's out there, it's geared to having you troubleshoot to make sure that, you know, is the configuration in place. Uh, once you validated that, that's pretty much it. So what does that have to do with not knowing which way to go? Um, not, not a ton, but, but some. So his logic and it's, you know, his logic, I can't fault his logic. I can't fault anyone's logic on how they determine which way to go. So in his case, uh, he, and he was trying to like help me understand why. And there's a mutual friend of ours named Ronnie who works for Cisco, who does a lot of the collaboration side of the house. He works uh, in like first or like second level tech for doing WebEx teams and you know WebEx meetings and things like that. When there's a problem, that's his job is to troubleshoot the problem and things like that. And all of that is well and good. And he said, well, I was thinking about, I was talking to Ronnie and I was thinking about going this way and I, you know, want to go the collaboration path because that will put me in the same team as Ronnie and, you know, do all this other stuff. And I'm, I'm speaking high level on this and I'm not giving any specifics away because I want to uh, help maintain the cover of these people because, um, you know, I haven't asked for anyone, for either of these people's permission to name the to talk about them in, in specifically. So um, I may or may not be using their real names. But the the thing that is difficult for me as an instructor to try to tell you which way to, to go is I don't always have all the information. You're asking me which direction to go. Well, I'm kind of the wrong person to ask. And the reason why I say that is because I am going to, uh, my, my knee-jerk reaction is like, okay, you've got your CCNA done? Great, nice job. Now go knock out your CCNP. You know, go through the, the enterprise core, then knock out an RC, you're in good shape. The reason why is because that takes you deeper into those technologies. Right? You're not just a, you're not a 
uh, a mile deep and an inch wide in the technologies like your CCNA. CCNA doesn't really take you that deep. CCNP will go much, much deeper, but obviously it doesn't go to the ends of the earth like CCIE does. But in most cases, you don't need to go to the CCIE depth. You need to understand the, the, overall, the overall arching technologies and things like that. So my initial response to anyone that asks me, what do you do after CCNA? Do you do the CCNP or do you go like DevNet? Or do you go collaboration or do you go security or do you go data center? And uh, my answer is, well, what, it, what interests you? You know, if, if security is, you know, you get all giddy, you know, over security, then I'm like, hey, if you have an automatic interest, go that direction. But one of the things that you'll find that when you get into the industry, I spent probably a year and a half, maybe two years going down the service provider path. And after having spent that amount of time, I was working for a Cisco partner where the majority of my day job and most of my customers, everything was security. So studying service provider basically was became a hindrance to me as a as an engineer, and I ended up having to study nothing but security technologies. Why? Well, number one, the job basically forced my hand and I had no choice. So if you have the ability to study a technology because it gives you a foothold into another, uh, to, to a higher level certification or whatever the case might be, then go that route, right? Most of the time, what's gonna end up happening is the job is going to force your hand and you're gonna go the direction you need to go to in order for you to get to where you need to be for that particular job. You know, you might, your boss might come to you and say, hey, I need you to go, I've got this project. Or, you know, that's often how it happened to me, was like, okay, hey, we have this project, I need you to go tackle this. I'm like, okay. So, kind of just doing what my boss tells you to do kind of deal. And you had to spend whatever time is necessary in order to learn that technology to be able to meet the deadline and deliver the project on time, right? That's that's a big deal, right? And if you wanna keep your job, that's usually how you go about doing it. Now, if you don't have that pressure, maybe you're in a position where you're not tasked with doing whatever it is that you need to do. Maybe there's no project that's forcing your hand. What if you're in a situation where you're kind of stuck? There is no real, uh, there is no forward or, um, there is no upward movement for you and you have to choose. And you're not you're afraid that if you make the wrong decision that you'll be stuck in your position longer than you want to. And that's another great point. That's and no one can answer that question for you. It's one of those things where I will always uh, default back to my core understanding. Get your CCMP out of the way and then everything else, all the other peripherals security, collaboration, wireless, they pretty much plug into enterprise core, or enterprise networking, right? Everything plugs into the network. Data center and service provider are a little bit different because they're kind of their own verticals, right? You've got enterprise, which is the enterprise core. You've got data center, which focuses heavily on the data center side of the house. And you have service provider for doing uh, MPLS and private WAN connectivity. So, when I say that I think everybody should go the CCMP enterprise track and knock it out and get that done and then switch gears to another, uh, another area is because number one, the barrier to entry is often easier, right? If you do security, you're probably gonna need access to things that you might not have. Like if you wanna learn firepower or if you wanna learn WSA or ESA or any of those technologies, you're commonly going to have to go out and have access to those bits to download, right? Be attached to a service account that allows you to download those files. You know, the ASA and the routers, they're not too terribly hard to get a hold of because if you buy viral access, guess what? You get the operating systems right then and there. So in cases like that, it's not too terribly difficult to download the right operating systems depending on which way you go. Security is not too difficult to get started in. Service provider isn't either. But if you don't work for a service provider, it's irrelevant, right? You know, no one needs to know MPLS layer 3 VPNs that well unless you actually work for a service provider. 
collaboration, you need phones, and you need call manager. Again, you might not have the service account rights to download call manager, and you have to go buy phones. You might have to go buy a switch. So your barrier to entry is much higher. Same thing with data center. Data center, unless you have the ability to download like the ACI simulator, the UCSPE is free, but if you go and pay for viral access, you can get the Nexus 9K. I'm studying that quite heavily right now. So depending on which track you decide to go, will the, pretty much dictate how what the barrier to entry is. So if you're going in the collaboration route, it's gonna cost you money up front because you have to buy phones, you have to buy switches in order to power the phones on, things like that. You'll need call manager, you'll need a server to install call manager on because you're really not gonna wanna run that on a VM inside a VMware player on your laptop. It just really isn't gonna fly for consistent testing and things like that. You're gonna definitely wanna get a small server with some decent uh, specs in order to run a lot of these technologies. So when I, when I say what I say, it's because it's the easiest barrier to entry, right? So you get Eve, you get Genus 3, you download the bits you need to, you get them up and running and voila, you're off to the races, right? There's really not a whole lot to it. If you go secure service writer, same kind of thing. The barrier to entry is actually pretty easy. Some parts of security, the barrier to entry is pretty easy, unless you're dealing with firepower or WSA, ESA, where there's not as much training. Um, but if you do ICE, you can download ICE for free and deal with a 90 day eval. So a lot of those aspects of things come into play and you need to pick and choose based off of what your access is. Though what's cool is when you get into a company where you're doing that particular thing, oftentimes when you move your CCO account to that particular uh, company's access, you then are granted access to the bits that you need to. So sometimes your what was a hindrance before is now an enabler to go in that particular area. So it really depends on the scenario at hand. So when I talk about core fundamentals, I say CCP Enterprise because it's easy for most people to do that, right? If you go any of the other tracks, you know, some are going to require you to spend money. Some are going to require you to be get uh, to get um, good with your Google Foo to find the bits that you need if you don't already have legit access to Cisco.com. They're they're out there. You just have to go find them, and you might not be comfortable in some of the areas you have to go to to download them. I'm very fortunate that anything that I want to go download, I have access to through Cisco. So, and I'm uh, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to do some of the testing and stuff like that that I have the ability to do so. So I'm grateful that I had the access. Um, I know that's not everybody's case. So that's why I say what I say. I'm trying to put some, you know, my own personal experiences out there to that. You know, if you're going to do, again, if you're going to do collaboration, you're going to need phones. You're going to need a switch in order to power those phones on. You're going to need call manager. If you're going to do security, you're going to need a lot of stuff. Firepower is a very, very large platform. But you don't necessarily need firepower out of the gate. You can do switch security, router security, ASA security, all that type of stuff first, and then worry about firepower down the road. You're going to want to get good at Google Foo. You know, start looking this stuff up. You might have to go to some some gray mark or some gray websites, meaning that they're not Cisco, and you might be like, "Well, I'm not sure I want to be here right now." You might have to do that if you roll. Depends on how bad you want to do it, right? I'm not going to tell you to go do there. You know, I'm not endorsing you to do that. I'm just saying that that's an option for you. That's pretty much it though, right? Take it for what it is, what it's not. If you are serious about that particular arena and that's what you want to go do, don't let anyone tell you it's a bad idea, right? That's because at the end of the day, it's your decision. You know, if you, if it's something you like to do, I don't give a crap what anybody else thinks, right? And because that's one of the common questions I get too. Well, you know, all my friends over here are telling me to do this or all the people that I follow are telling me to do that. Okay, why are you listening to them? The one number one thing that I always tell people is if you have an interest in something specific and you have the means to do it, why, why are you letting somebody else's opinion or, um, you know, opinion basically dictate what you do? Why are you letting that happen? This is, you know, this is the 20, we're in 2020. Why are you letting, why are you listening to somebody else's two cents? 
you know, follow, you know, something interests you, follow it your own way. That's what I do. I don't listen to other people. I just stay to myself. I don't, I'm not in, um, another, another thing is I, per, I personally don't participate in any study groups. I'm not in any study groups at all. So if people ask me, you know, like, you know, do you know anybody? I'm like, yeah, I know people that are out there, right? But I don't spend any time in study groups. I used to be in study groups. Um, some were really good. Some weren't so great. Um, but it's my personal choice not to participate in them. Number one reason, I've often found study groups, especially very large study groups, to be very noisy and distracting. I am very easily distracted. And if I see a bunch of stuff going on over here, I don't spend the time in the areas that I need to. So I tend to, you know what, I disconnect because it benefits me. Am I friends with a lot of people that are in study groups? Sure. Do I, you know, if I need help, I've got LinkedIn and I've got Twitter. If I need, you know, and, and the, the internet, right? So I don't let any, I don't let other people's stuff cloud my judgment. I handle things the way that I think they should be handled. Simple as that. Anyway, I don't want to make this video too much longer because I want to keep advice videos pretty short, but that's what I basically wanted to, to lay out for you is follow your own interests and, you know, if your job is forcing your hand, then go all in, right? The more you put into it, the better, the more you're going to get out of it. And when it comes to training, whatever works for you. I personally, I've been using INE for years. But that doesn't always work for everybody, and unfortunately, there's certain aspects of INE that doesn't work for me. So right now, with the uh, the data center path, there's a lot of content. But if I went to collaboration, or if I went to, I don't know, any of the other like the design, not really great for design. So I don't exactly know what I would do for design, but that's another story altogether. At any rate, that's that's it for me. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you haven't already done so, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy, guys.